thank you everyone so much for joining us today. Uh, we know that there are other options, right, where you could be right now. It's beautiful outside. There's another presentation going on in a room probably pretty close to us. We just ate lunch. We're probably feeling a little tired, um, but we're going to do our best to get through a case study that we think is very relevant to the conversations that we've had and heard here today, and we'll continue to hear throughout the course of this conversation. And so, as mentioned, uh, my name is Nick Cannon. And I brought with me my colleague, Jason James, and we work at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, which is a health insurer. It is the largest insurer in the state of Michigan, and we insure millions of lives. And as you can imagine, just like the organizations that you work in, there are lots of risks, lots of regulators, lots of audits, internal and external, lots of people who come knocking and asking for things. And it's important for us as an organization to have ways to give the first line of defense the opportunity to effectively and efficiently track, monitor, manage, and mitigate their risks. So that when we get that auditor knocking on the door, um, we're ready, right? Or hopefully we're ready. And so hopefully this case study sheds a little bit of light on a recent implementation that we've had and how we've been able to do something like um, effectively manage change, right, within that space, within that implementation, as well as achieving buy-in from our stakeholders, which is sometimes a tricky thing to do, right? It's not always easy to manage both. And so I think we've got a great conversation here today that we'd like to have with you, where we walk you through a success story that we've recently had. And so I'd like to start by saying, well, how do we do that, right? How, how, do, you, how do you effectively manage change and how do you get that buy-in from your stakeholders that's so critical to the process and the success of that process? And I would say that really in sum, it's here on this executive summary. And to me, this really should probably say technology strategy roadmap, right? First and foremost, you've got to look at what your technology strategy is. If you don't know, you should think about it. And you should find one that does these things that leverages a framework that's efficient and effective and that can be used by the business if they are ready. We'll get more into that in just a second. But you also wanna prioritize that roadmap based on risk, right? We've heard a lot about risk today. That's probably pretty obvious in a conversation like this. We all would expect to have that be a, be a topic of discussion. But that risk has to focus on innovation, right? And what's next? And we've heard some of the panelists talk about that today as well. And so, in addition, your innovations have to focus on helping the lines of, the, of, of defense work more effectively, work more efficiently, get out of those spreadsheets, get into something that's transparent, something that's usable, something that's easy, something that's friendly, but something that connects the dots so that you can start to be future proof. You also want to keep innovation a priority. How do you do that? You've got to focus on business partners who are ready, willing, and able. That is a mantra that we live by when it comes to our technology implementations, and we'll talk more about that here momentarily. And last but not least, you want to use that implementation process to build trust with your stakeholders, and you do that by adding value to what it is that they're trying to accomplish. What sits in their operational space, in their spreadsheets, in their silos that they wanna to take to the next level, that they wanna use in a more effective and meaningful way. A little bit more about who we are, um, just so that you all know, we are not an IT function. Uh, we work in the compliance audit and special investigations unit within our division. We are a quasi IT team, I would say, that sits within that division and does a lot of these things. One of which you see on the bottom of the screen on the left hand side is metric stream. We administer metric stream to our business partners. That's what this conversation is going to be about. You heard some of the other panelists talk about bringing some robotics process automation to some of that information. We do that too. It works really well when you've got the right requirements and it makes sense. And let me tell you, it saves a lot of time. 
We also do things like data analytics and consulting, and we work with our operations space. We, we have data intake and management. We do lots and lots of different things as it relates back to technology holistically from our divisional perspective, from our roadmap. And so just understanding that what we do in a nutshell is to drive that innovation across the business and to bring that effective work to a tool for them to be able to work, um, I think will help lay the foundation for what's to come in this conversation. And it wasn't easy for us, right? I mean, this isn't where we started. It's where we are today, but I would say that where we started was probably like most companies. So I'm looking in the rear view mirror now, and I'm 10, 12 years behind, and I'm saying to myself, some businesses were siloed. Some still might be. But from that point, and once we started to, de to develop our technology strategy roadmap and understand where we wanted to go and what was important and what needed to be there and how to bring that to the business, we started to become more assorted. So instead of things sitting in a silo, we've got things sitting in different places, yet at the same time, they're starting to connect and make a little bit more sense. So maybe in just one, maybe you've got a risk or a body of risk or something that's being tracked in one area it's now being, or that's being siloed in one area in one business, um, and then in another business, and then in another business or a department or a division. Um, now it's assorted where all of that started to, you know, sort of be in the same tool, but not really talking to each other in, a, in, in, a, in an effective way, if you will. But now um, the key is, and where we see most of our end users at this point in time is at a space where they are integrated, right? They've got the information in the tool. They've got things at a place where it's speaking to, uh, the, the information is speaking to itself, right? And so you're able to connect the dots. You're able to pull the information together. You're able to make sense of what it is that's sitting in front of you. We started our journey, um, which is now up to eight modules with four key modules, and they start here from left to right. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the system, with the application, you know what these modules are. Um, for those of you who aren't, I just recommend you take note, take a look at it. If you've got questions, we're happy to, to talk about that at Q&A, but for the most part, we're starting with compliance management, we're starting with issue management, we're starting with internal audit, and we're starting with policy and document management. This stuff in our industry reflects the seven elements of compliance. This is our bread and butter from a compliance audit and special investigations perspective. This is the stuff that makes our regulators happy if we can prove that we're doing those things. And so, back to that business model, right? And back to what makes that change management successful. Back to what makes that buyer trust you and that, and, and that customer trust you and wants to buy into the process. We have what we call a ready, willing, and able strategy, right? That's the formula that we simplify and that we use when we go to our stakeholders and say, are you ready? Are you ready? to optimize your processes, to jump out of that silo, to take a step forward. Are you able, excuse me, are you willing? Are you, are, your, are you and your business partners and your team, are you willing to evolve? Are you willing to grow? Do you want to get out of that silo? Do you want to step away from that spreadsheet? Do you want to do more with your information? Are you able, right? We just heard somebody talk about budget, and we were certainly jealous for those of us that were in the room. And um, budgets are tight. We know that across companies. But if you've got the people who are dedicated to not only support the process and take things from a silo and put them into a tool where the information is speaking to itself and giving you greater value and greater information for what, the, for what you're doing, and you've got the folks who want to learn the tool and want to learn the system and want to be there and want things to be better, and that equation aligns, you're set up for success. So if there's one key takeaway that you can take from this conversation, think about this formula. It works. Casey. My turn, and I pace, so I've got the compel. Quickly to help. Let me direct this a little bit. Show of hands, are you a current metric stream user? One back there, there. Okay. I'm gonna dive a little deep dive a little deeper um, in this here uh, 
micro lens on one module, one recent use case we've had in regulatory change management. So those metric stream users, are you using regulatory change management today? Anybody? I know you are. My boss. Um, all right. So we're going to talk a bit about what we experienced, benefits we saw from implementing this, and you know, maybe trigger some thoughts for you. RCM, as we call it, is a module that allows us to set up several channels of regulatory information to be filtered into metric stream. It can come from RSS feeds, it can come from email channels, it can come from uh, several other external sources, but it's going to automatically pull that content into metric stream for your users to be able to react to. We have a business case in the company where we were receiving hundreds weekly, thousands annually, of regulatory notices, state, federal, across all 50 states. A massive amount of information that they needed to be able to read and triage and react to. It was a little decentralized, so they're looking for a solution. We thought we had it here in metric stream. They need to be able to identify next steps, triage those alerts to the right SME, and be able to follow up on action plans. So we're building our requirements list, still saying, yeah, we think we've got something Subject matter experts are able to read the alert in the tool, assess the impact, mark it viable, not applicable, whatever, and then document the next action plan and steps for follow-up. If you're a metric stream user, you're probably using issue management. Module flows right into it with those action steps determined from the assessment. One thing that's just fantastic about our use case across the board now in the 10 years we've been doing it is everything is scalable. Once we build it for one area, Another one comes knocking. I'm like, can you replicate that for us? Can you tweak a little bit? So this was the same thing. We looked at RCM and said, this is going to be hot. We're going to build it, and then we know there's another area that's going to come knocking and knocking and knocking. And now two years in with this one, it's starting to happen. And we're now seeing a scalable uh, solution, and, and we're going to realize the benefits of that. So that's kind of the setup for, for what's going to happen here. Going to the three questions Nick brought up and asking, are they ready for this? So we have an area, they're growing rapidly, all 50 states, a lot of alerts that they're dealing with. Their current process is a little all over the place. Some of the users are reading websites and, and looking at bulletins posted. Some of them are subscribing to email lists. Some of them have RSS feeds. It's inefficient, it's cumbersome, it's all over the place. It's not one source of truth. So you could have had multiple teams look at the same thing and not knowing it and then we've got different truths or maybe we're missing things so it, it's just not efficient email sure we can search in outlook and find keywords but when you're tracking workflow through email did i do this did you do that it's not a great audit trail it's not fantastic we're trying to figure out when was something attended to what decision was made what are my metrics for tracking that so they didn't have much beyond hey, I did it, and you're going to believe me that I did it because here's the email that said I did. So they're a little scattered in where they're at. And then the biggest risk for all of us was we might miss something. Did you read that website today? Did that email list get checked? There wasn't that single source of truth. So with RCM, what we can do is tell them, you're ready for this. You're ready to sign into one place. You might be doing other stuff because we're pretty mature in metric stream for some of our modules, but now you can go in and see your alerts in one spot and attend to it, and you're gonna feel better that we're not leaving something on the doorstep. So at that point, if you're asking these questions and all those things are there, yes, they're ready to move forward. So being willing, this is the sales hat. This is where we step in and say, you're ready for it, but we have a solution, and we want you to buy in, and we want you to listen to the story of what we think this module can do for you. So we go in and we do our demo, partner with Metricstream, great to sit down with them. And, and this was a new module for us, so walk us through kind of how it works. But we get to them and say, all right, here is one location. So you're going to send your SMEs and send your analysts into the tool, go through your triage list that day. When it's empty, you're done. We're not going to multiple spots. So it was really security and confidence that they were getting everything that was subscribed to simplification of the workflow. Previously, one team was filling out Excel sheets, throwing them on a SharePoint. Did you check the SharePoint? Did you then go to the Word document and write your signature? Or did you send an email to sell and sell? 
in metric stream, we have a task list. We triage it out. Did you do your task list? Is it empty? The audit trail's there for signing off on it. It's a simplified workflow. Again, saving time because people are going to one spot. So now, half a day's of work, hour or two. One of the favorite things the end users are finding is the built-in reassignment. Now, re reassignment's not, I don't want to do it today, I want to give it to Nick. Reassignment is, it doesn't belong to me, it belongs to Greg. And it came to me mistakenly, but I don't have to go through some process to sign a form, move things over. It's built right in. I can just click reassign. And if the permission's granted, because it's all permission-based system, he's available for me to reassign it to. Simple audit trail says when I did it, why I did it, comments history says why I did it. So they love that. Best feature. Well, I'll back up. Action steps, also best feature. Because we're going to document what needs to happen. I'm going to open my issue and issue management and say, you do this, you do that. I approve that close, I approve that close. Alerts taken care of. So both of those great features. Leaders like the last one. Audit trail, dashboards, show me that pie chart of how many alerts are critical. Show me that pie chart of the aging or the bar graph. Dashboards that are out of the box, dashboards being custom built. So something for the users, something for the leaders. Now we've done the sale and they are, they're willing. It took us a couple months, but we got there and they're on it and we're building it. We're moving forward to that last question. Well, after I say yes. Are they able? Able's where I do my job, for the most part. Sell a bit, but able is getting them there. They are ready, they are willing. We need to help them build it. We need to support them and get them to launch and pass that. So we develop a solution. We sit down with them and document their current process. We don't want to leave everything they're doing behind. You have good ideas, you have the workflow. How do we put them in the tool? So we build it out through out of the box workflow, maybe make some customizations, but we show them how to plug a channel in or we plug a channel for them. And our company, this is not a here's metric stream, go build it. We develop a forum and show them how to use it and, and give them a fully supported system. After we set them up, we train in any way they want to train. That's usually live handheld kickoff trainings. Often it's produced videos where we're gonna highlight buttons for them and walk them through simple three to five minute videos. Some people are, are readers, so we'll build them PowerPoints or quick reference guides. You support them so they have several ways to pull down that training, however they feel comfortable using it. Support is something I think we do really well something I can't push you to do enough if you're not doing a ton of it yet. We have open office hours, like when you were in college. Dedicated two hours a week, we're gonna be there, we're not distracted, you show up, we are gonna answer your questions live in person. Of course you can set meetings, but uh, we found people are more willing if they know that they can kind of come, they don't feel like you're intruding so much because you're there to work for them. So office hours are great. We have a mailbox we attend to responses on same day. Um, warranty, we're gonna help you make changes to the process. You might think you know what you want and get into it. It's gonna change a little bit. So those pillars, when you tell them you're gonna do that, they're more willing to take it on. They're more willing to say, all right, we'll go on the journey with you because you're not gonna let us go once we get there. So we do those three things and now they are able and we're at the build and we're off and we're running. So when we look back at RCM, this again was a, a newer module for us. This recent build, we didn't have any other department using it yet. So we were gonna watch carefully, how did it go? What are we learning? What are we gonna bring to this one next time? So certainly wanna share this with you, you can sit. Trusting relationships are gonna come from all these lessons. We're gonna go into the next one and say, I'm gonna save you time because I learned this from the last one. So. Um, Building those, being good consultants, these are the key takeaways. Emails are great. 500 emails a day related to the one workflow, not so great. So think about the impact. Um, you know, we were starting out talking, they're getting 100 some alerts a day. Well, we started it with here's one email per one alert. That's a little bit of overflow. We pared that down to a digest. Every morning, okay, you have 100 alerts. 
was one digest email was telling you there's 100 in there. They can sign in through your task list, see the, the trash list, but we pared that down. Um, an email every single time a button's clicked, you can get there, not so great. So figure out which notifications are important. Start with those. You can always add more later. So uh, that was one thing. Outlook rules, I know it's not metric stream, but setting up Outlook rules for users was also great because they can see now, let's navigate all those keywords down to one folder. I can watch that number tick up, but it's not bothering me on that ping, ping, ping every single moment. And then they'll learn, go into the tools, see my task list, or just go to the Outlook folder that I set up. So support them kind of outside of the system, think about things like that. You can do a million minute little things in metric stream. Very dedicated processes. End users sometimes think they know grand schemes, kind of where they want to go. Start slower. We might have overprescribed the workflow a little bit on this one at the start. And there were a lot of steps. And we pulled it back a bit and really found a sweet spot. Really found what's the bare minimum that we're looking at to say we read this, we attended to it, we took action on it, or deemed it not applicable. After they got those first initial steps down, then they're flying and they feel good. And now they're coming to us and saying, what about, can we add this value? What about adding a step? Do we want to maybe trigger a new um, GRC object out of this? So start slower, build as they learn the system. Again, metric stream comes with, if you've used it and if you have it, a million reports list reports, dashboards, and we can custom build reports. Know what matters first before you get going crazy building custom reports, because the plan might change. We're looking right now at this use case two years on of doing a whole suite of new dashboards. And thankfully they bought into us when we said, let's wait until we get down the road to build those customs, because now I think the values have changed four or five times on some things. And had we built it one way, now we'd be redoing it there. So tell your client, yes, we can do this. Start out of the box, we can get there, but that's like step seven, not step three. Do that, they're gonna be really happy with the outcome. Those executives are gonna love it. So Nick started talking about silos. Challenge those silos, come optimized, make metric stream, the one silo, if you're using eight modules, now we look at our CM saying, this might be the start of all the workflow. An alert comes in, we read the alert, now we see new policies we need to put in the system, new requirements we're gonna build for our libraries, new control tests are gonna start coming out of this. It's the ground floor of things we're gonna build into that silo that we have. Right on time, basically. I think we've got like a minute or two here for questions. Anybody have any questions? How big is your team that supports this with your internal business stakeholders? Our team, roughly, uh, how many people support this? Um, Enterprise-wide, how many users enterprise-wide, like, like 8,000? So we've got about 4,800 core end users in the solution today. Core end user is driven by somebody logging into the application at least monthly. We have 16,000 end users across our enterprise today and using metric stream for at least one function. So across my team from a, from a staffing perspective, supporting metric stream at any given one time, it's like one and a half FTP worth of time supporting it all. But we have admins in each one of those core functional areas. These guys do a lot more than just the one tool. This is one of many that we own. We're basically able to support that full enterprise with really three to four users, no, three to four admins. I would also add that the key is really to make sure that you're looking for sustainability right off the gate, right? You've got to make things easy for your stakeholders and you've got to give them a place to point to if they've got questions. And if you build that up correctly, then you're going to find that on the back end, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and a lot of effort. And so give that some thought as you start to think through your build for your organization. I think one thing we believe in is that training piece. There are a lot of different companies I've seen before I was here and in other industries 
where they'll build it and then say, it's on you to document your own process. That person's coming back to you faster than you want them to. Spend some time supporting them on the launch and they will be back less frequently because they will just be better for it. So it's it's worth the front loaded effort on that. Did you have? I, I, I had a couple of questions. If that's okay. If we had the time. Great yeah. presentation, love it. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, you talked about seven apps, seven or eight apps on the wheel that you showed us. Uh, how long have you been implementing that system? So uh, we purchased the system as a as a company in two thousand. Sorry. Could you repeat the question? the question? Oh. Absolutely. The question is how long, we have eight modules that we have implemented at Blue Cross. And the question was how, how, how long did it take? When did you start? And so we started with our core modules. We, we made our purchase in 2012. And then from there, we built out. I would say by 2016, every module was in the tool. And in 2020, we brought on regulatory change management. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I also have a couple other questions. Absolutely. So they kick us out. Okay. <laughs> um, one of them's about reporting tools in Metric Screen. You said you have a lot of reports and there's a lot of risk reports that you have in the application. Are you hooked into any other tools? And that's my first question. Are you hooked into any other tools reporting and analytics tools with Metric Screen? Absolutely. We've got we've got APIs that are set up to pull data out for certain key um, core business areas, if you will. And uh, we've got reports then that we take that data and we automate information for them so it's brought to them in a meaningful way using scripts, whether it's Python or other, to be able to pull the information out and show them what's required for committees, senior leaders, etc. cetera. Um, we've also got Tableau, which we use for data analytics, um, and a few others that, um, that I can't think of off the top of my head, but absolutely we've got our data connected to other to other tools, other processes, other systems to make it digestible for that audience. Um, you're welcome. Um, RWA has a great, uh, great mantra. Uh, what happens when you implement an application and people come back to you, and I'm sure that they do when they tell you, hey, this is too many clicks, this is too inefficient. What kind of feedback are you getting? Because we're, we're getting some of that feedback today, and we're trying to understand how we can make it Absolutely. So the question for the floor is, is how do we, you know, if we have stakeholders that come to us and say, how do we reduce the clicks? What do we do? And what we do really was, was touched on in this presentation. We try to right size. We try to skinny things down based on what the business area wants. So we take a deliberate look at the workflow and we do our best to understand what notifications are key for that particular business area. We try to understand what information is key for them to get their work from A to B or through the alphabet, right, to Z. Um, and we, we prioritize in that way, making it meaningful for them. Absolutely, there are clicks, right? But if we can show folks the essentials and what they need to do to get their job done, and when we start with that buy-in from senior leadership, which takes a little bit of time, um, at, at some point, the two meet and people come, and if you build it, they come. Sure. So I'm going to have to call it on, guys. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.